Hey there, Steve here, hope you're doing well. In this video, I will show you five math rock slash Midwest emo riffs that are going to make you a better player this year. First, you'll see examples of each riff along with the tab. Then I'll tell you how each riff is going to help you improve our guitar. And lastly, I'll teach you how to play each riff with some handy tips and pointers. <laughs> So to kick things off we have the song Birdhouse by Tiny Moving Parts and this is off their album Celebrate. But how will this riff help you get better at guitar? Well first it's going to improve your strumming and muting technique through a tricky strumming pattern. You'll improve your hammer-ons, pull-offs and slides through a rapid fire descending lick. You'll learn how changing a rhythm suddenly is a great way to add variation to an idea to keep things interesting and lastly learn something in D, A, E, A, C sharp E tuning and alternate tunings like this one are commonplace in math rock and Midwest emo. So it's an excellent example of what can be done in this tuning and it's a great place for you to start. So let me walk you through some pointers that are going to help you learn this riff. Like I said, we are in D, A, E, A, C sharp E tuning, but we are half a step down. And if I can get that correct, that means we are D flat, A flat, E flat, A flat, C and E flat. I had to think about that one, but nonetheless. That's what it should sound like. And we're going to break it into two different parts and we'll take these two parts in bar by bar, let's say. So for this intro part, we've got this tricky strumming pattern that's really going to work on your strumming technique as well as your muting technique. And for this one, that's what we're going to be playing. So you'll start with your index on the 12th fret here on this A string. And then you'll want a bit of a stretch, but your ring finger is going to go on the 15th fret on this C string here. And we want this low D flat string to ring. This one will be muted with the underside of your index finger. And then this G string here, which is now A flat, will be ringing. And you want to hit that 15th fret, of course. So you've got one, two, three, one, two, three, four strings ringing there. And this high E is going to be muted. And the reason I'm using my index here, uh, sorry, my ring finger, instead of using my little finger for the stretch is because we need to bring in the 17th fret uh, in part of this drumming pattern. And the strumming pattern, while it sounds confusing, it's actually just one and, so that's the first two strums. One and two and three and four. That's what we're doing there. But as you know, we're throwing these muted parts in to make it a little bit tricky, but it really gives some energy and just makes this strumming pattern sound so cool. And to get those dead notes, you want to be using the palm to uh, as you mute and hit the strings. Don't worry if you're not getting them all dead here because you're going to have various harmonics ringing. That's completely fine, to be honest. And that's the that's the rhythm you're aiming for there. So I'm, as I hit my palm, I'm hitting the strings dead at the same time. Take your time with that one. It's a bit tricky, but once you nail it, it feels great. The second part, we've got this rapid fire descending riff. And again, we're gonna break this into parts just to make it easier. At the end of this bar here, we're gonna have on the and of four, you're going to hit this uh, A flat string open. And then you're going to hammer on with your, I want you to use your middle finger here, onto the ninth fret on the same string. And then pull off like this. And then you're going to come up to the fourth fret with your index finger. And it's all just hitting the string once. And you're going to hammer off an hour up to the fifth fret using your index, uh, your middle finger, sorry. You're going to come back down again to pull off. And then pull off again once there, one, one more time to let that string ring. And if we take that very slowly. And if 
the next part, we're going to bring our hand here and we're going to tap on the 7th fret on this D A, uh, a flat string here. And we're going to pull off. And we keep that string ringing. And then we hammer on with our index finger onto the 2nd fret. And we're going to slide up to the 4th fret. And then back down again and then pull off. And when we put the two together, That just leaves the tricky part, of course. So as we come down to the end of this tapping riff, want to have your hand ready here, so you can hit that uh, below, so above the uh, below, below or above the nut here, with that very jarring sound. And as you hit this, you want to make sure that this hand is travelling down to the fifth fret natural harmonics here. So if we just put that into action. So all together. And then we jump back down to the repeat of the riff there. For the second part, luckily it's the same rhythm, but we're just changing the chord shapes. So we're going to start on the 9th fret, same strings again, 9th fret and the 12th fret here. And for this one, we're going to make sure that this low string is not ringing for this one. And we just want the these three strings going for this one. So you can mute using the underside of your index finger here. The tricky one with this one is getting this uh, A A flat string A flat string to ring along with it. And again, it's the same rhythm, and we're going to bring in an, our little finger to play the 13th fret here. And then we slide down to here. And again, we're using the low E. Uh, we're too much if this one does ring, to be honest with this one. But again, these three strings. And I recommend this fingering here, so your middle finger and ring finger here, to move to this shape as easy as possible. When it's going at full speed, you'll be thankful to be, for doing that. And at the end here, I love this, it adds, uh, Dylan adds this triplet rhythm. It just signals that the idea is finished and there's you know, a new idea coming or you know, the repeat signal, the repeat. So some great songwriting. And this one is two triplets, so one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then we're back to the... If I could hit those harmonics. It's pretty tricky, but it's a fun riff. So moving on we have Fall of Hell by Forrest and this is from their record Get In Losers We're Going To Eternal Damnation. A wonderful title and a wonderful record that I listened to a ton last year. So how will this riff help improve your guitar skills? So it's going to improve your hammer on technique by practicing some legato style hammer on runs and this riff is an excellent way to practice what I call the chords with licks approach. A common idea that's used a ton in math rock and Midwest emo style guitar playing so it's something that we really want to master. But how do we play it? Well, here's some handy tips and pointers. This riff idea is based around two chords, a C major seven shape and this G major seven shape. And these are handy, moody alternatives to, to power chords. 
that I love, and I always love hearing them when other bands use them. Oh, and we're in standard tuning for this one. And the whole riff idea is based around a G major scale. <laughs> So there's some of the notes that you are going to hear. We'll break it into two parts. We'll take a look at the C major shape part and the G major shape part. Both chords have got this same strum. And I want you to cut it off using your palm afterwards like that. And then we have, it's followed by this lovely hammer on run from the G string here. And you're going to go open and then hammer on with your index and then your middle and a similar thing here but from the D string and you're going to use your index and your ring for this one let's add the last piece of the puzzle back to the G string and you're going to use your index and your ring again but this time you're going to pull off like so Such a fun riff. And then the second time round there's a bit of variation which is always wonderful to use to make things more interesting of course. So instead of pulling off to that ringing note, we're going to play these G and these G and B harmonics together. And I find the best way to do this is to bring in your middle finger to hit those notes because they are pretty quick and it's tricky to get right. To get that. So you might want to practice just that bit of the section by looping it. And that leads us on to the, to the G chord here. And it's the same strumming again. And I want you to mute that. And for this one, we're gonna hammer on again from the D string, fourth fret. I want you to use the index. And I want you to use a ring to hammer onto the fifth here, instead of your index. And there's a reason why. Because we're gonna slide up here to the ninth fret on the D string, and then you're going to bring your index finger to the G string to play the seventh fret. So it's a bit more of a awkward stretch if you use your middle finger. Now, here comes the really tricky part of this riff, but it's well worth the time investing to master this really rapid fire 16th triplets uh, hammer on part. So you're going to go triplet, so again, it's in groups of threes. To hammer on, just like you did in the, that riff there. But this time, you're also going to bring in the G string, five and seven, five and seven D string. 5 7 G string, and now last part, the trickiest part, 7th to 9th. You're going to pull off again like you did in that original riff. And you're going to hit the 9th fret on the D string. Let's listen to the whole thing at a slower speed. Moving on, we have the song Been Thinking by Hikes, and this is from their Mahal Kita record. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. But how will this riff help you improve at guitar? So it's really going to improve your finger tapping skills, finger picking skills, but definitely it's going to improve your natural harmonic skills through some tricky yet rewarding parts that are contained in these two bars. Well, how do we play it? Well, here's some tips and pointers to get you started. I'm just gonna take this capo off because we are in a different tuning. So for this one, we are, if I consult my notes here, we're in D, A, D, 
five sharp B E tuning. That does sound lovely. And this is, as far as I'm aware, an alternate take on a common tuning that's used a lot by in math rock and Midwest Demo, which is D A D F sharp A E. So that A string is going to be changed to B instead. And we are going to affix a capo on the second fret here. And like I said in how this riff will help you improve, uh, we will be using finger picking, so you don't need a pick for this one. Now I'll just do a quick tune up again. Oh, and um, a few things for this one. She does use delay on the track, so I've thrown a bit of delay on for now. And we're going to separate this into two parts. The finger tapping part. And this natural. Um, natural harmonic part. That is the tricky part, but we'll get to that soon. So to begin with this uh, finger tapping part, you're going to be playing this high string here, and you're going to walk up, then walk back down again, essentially. And I want you to hit the string open, and then hammer on with your index, and then your little finger, and then bring up your index finger here, and you're going to hold it there with your ring finger. And then keep this finger anchored here on the fret because you're going to go hammer, uh, tap this fret here with your index finger, then you're going to pull off. hammer on from nowhere, i.e. tap onto the second fret with your index finger on that B string. But it is pretty quick like that. But it's not too difficult to master this one. And then you're going to bring in your, your index finger here, uh, sorry, your middle finger, to give a bit of, of a wallop and stability there to hit that seventh fret here and that's where we bring in that you know digitech uh, whammy ricochet but if you haven't got one of those um, <laughs> it's just a nice little trick but you might not want to buy a pedal just to do that then give it some vibrato instead just give it a little wobble like that and now the tricky part starts you're going to be playing the B and the G strings fifth fret natural harmonics and now you're going to tap on the fret here with some tapped harmonics on the 12th fret so 12th fret on the E string and then B string so alternate between the two like so and then the last beat is going to be the 7th fret but same two strings the G and the B again Like I said, don't worry if you're not nailing those completely, because it is really tricky. As you can see, I'm missing a lot of those too. And then here comes that fast run that runs between the 12th fret and the 7th fret. Which is really good fun. And for this one, instead of anchoring your finger behind the fretboard like so, you can see it starts to get a bit awkward to do. So what I found is the best way to approach this is to have your hand floating over the top. As you can see, my thumb is not even on the back of the neck. And kind of just bring your hand over the top for this one. And this, we can separate this into two different parts as well. So the these three notes. So we've got highest note here and seventh fret on the B and the B and the G string again. So you could just practice looping it like that. And this took me a long time, so please don't panic if you're finding it really difficult at, at first. It's the picking pattern that makes it tricky. And the second part is kind of the inverse of this, where we've got the two strings here. We're going to play the two strings down here instead on the G and the B, and then 7th fret on the D string here. 
that's what makes it tricky, is it's literally the inverse of this. But once you start to see it that way, it becomes a lot easier. But it, again, the tricky part also is getting those natural harmonics to sound cleanly. But persevere, loop it, take your time, and you'll have it down in no time. So moving on we have the song Finger by Elephant Jim and this is from their Balance EP. But how will this riff make you better at guitar? Well it'll improve your finger dexterity with some tricky fingering, it'll improve your muting technique and it's an excellent example of call and response star riffs used in math rock and midwest emo. So how do we play it? Well here's some handy tips and pointers, we're in standard tuning for this one and this riff <laughs> based around three chords, a B minor arpeggio for the, the, the call style, the part of the riff, sorry. You're hearing that kind of sound, right? And then this descending melody is based around a going a G major sound, sorry, an A major sound to a G major sound. So for this first part here, the fingering is tricky and getting the rhythm and the phrasing is really important here. And to do this we're going to use our middle index and ring finger. It's kind of staccato the first time we play it round. So I'm not, not letting those notes ring. For those first three notes then you're going to bar your index finger here for the B and uh, sorry the G and the B strings. You're going to hit those two together and you're going to let them ring, like so. Then you're going to repeat the riff again, but this time you can let the notes ring. Instead of coming up here with our ring finger uh, to the finger, sorry, on the 10th fret, we're going to be playing this barred note here instead on the 7th fret. Same rhythm again to make things easier. Now, I'm going to repeat the same thing again, again staccato style, and then now we have a variation. So, and we're going to bring our ring up to the ninth fret on the E string, and then our little finger is where it's going to come into play on the B string on the tenth fret here. So let's do that slowly. And that's the whole thing together. Now it's the response part, and this is a descending star melody. But those are the chords we're going to be using. And because our index finger is already primed up here, from the initial call part, very easy just to bar it there and then you're going to have these shapes, same picking pattern as well, which makes things easier. You're going to let all of these notes ring. Take your ring finger off. Same thing again, but we're barred all the way across with our index finger. Now change to this shape, middle, index, ring. Same shape again. Now you're going to slide that one down to the fifth right here and play that same rhythm again. thing together slowly.
So, right then, on to our last one. For this one, we have one of my own songs, and this is called Friend, it's by my band Mountains, and it's off our release Old Friends, which came out in 2023. But finally, how will this riff help you improve at guitar? Well, it's going to improve your hybrid picking technique, or it may even be the first time you practice with hybrid picking. I'll show you a picking pattern that you can use, and it's a great example of how you can arpeggiate chords in standard tuning to make this kind of pseudo alternate tuning sound and feeling. So, well, tips and pointers, how can we play it? Well, I see this idea as being three chords. The harmony is a A ringing string, E ringing string, and a B ringing string there, as you can see, and as you can probably hear already, you've kind of got that sound going on here, very major, very happy, it's a, it's a nice calm section within this song. So the trick to this one is this first two chords, we're gonna keep the same shape and we're going to use the same picking pattern. And we're gonna have that open ringing A string and open ringing E string. And you're gonna jump here, play that with your pick and then use your ring finger here to play the ninth fret on the B string and pull off. And then come back down the string with your middle finger here to hit the G string. Ninth fret on the E string and hammer off again, pull off again, sorry. And then come down two strings. And then lovely, we're gonna repeat the same thing again but with the low E ringing instead. This is where things start to change. We're gonna bring our thumb, for me, but you can play this with your index finger. And you're just gonna walk up the strings like that. Pick, pick, middle, ring, little finger. And then I'll add a bit of variation by hitting these two strings at the same time on the repeat. Repeat the riff again. And there's a slight variation to round off this riff, I add a transitional chord at the end. And again, this F sharp minor chord. Gonna pick your way through that riff, uh, through that chord, from top and top, from top and from top to bottom. It's from bottom to top, I should say, like so. So if you'd like to get PDF versions and Guitar Pro versions of these tabs that you can take away and practice in your own time, then those are available to the lovely patrons that support this channel. I've put that in a link down below in the description. And becoming a patron also gets you access to a wealth of a back catalogue of everything that I've done on this channel, as well as structured courses that I've made just to help motivate, inspire, and help you ultimately learn math rock guitar. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.